Thank you for choosing to listen to today's message by Reverend Dr. David Entry. We know you will be blessed as you seek and serve God. We believe that this message will stir up a desire for more of God, even as you listen. Be blessed. You see, when you go anywhere and you see a speaker like this, he didn't come here by himself. Somebody has put it there. When you come into the room and you see ah, First Kings chapter 4, somebody do this. These things can't come here by themselves. That is the same way the anointing is. If you are looking for an anointing, look for an anointed. There can never be any demonstration, any expression, any manifestation of anointing without an anointed. Because the anointing is always on a person. The person the anointing is on is called the anointed. So what makes a man of God a man of God? What makes a man of God supernatural, has supernatural influence is not the Bible school he attended, not the, the people he knows, not his phonetics, not his accent, accent, not his English, not his grammar. Those things don't determine anointing. There are people who have poor grammar but rich oil. <laughs> Elisha, they called Elisha. And they said, alas, master, we borrowed this axe head. It has fallen into the river. It was borrowed. Can you do something? He said, cut, bring me a, 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 just a stick. He threw the stick on the water. I said, where did it fall? There, he said, threw it. And the metal floated from under the water. Axe head. <sighs> Anointing. Anointing. He said, the boy is dead. Where did you put him? Show me. He went there. He laid on the boy. The boy sniffed. He woke up. That's anointing. Grace was on Peter so much that if you wanted your healing, you have to find Peter's shadow. He was just passing. He doesn't have to touch you. His shadow. <laughs> John 1, 6. There is a man. God will always send men. So, they make past coming. They, oh, why, why are you focusing on a man of God? Just a man of God. Man. Because if God wants to come to you, he will send a man. If you miss, watch this, if you miss the man, you have missed God. If you miss, if you miss the man God sent to you, guess what? You have missed God. When God sent Ananias to go and pray for Saul in Acts chapter 9 from verse 11 downwards, particularly 15, can you imagine if when Ananias went, Saul said, I don't want to see anybody. You are just a man. God himself that he has missed his destiny for He's a man. So those who talk like men don't matter when it comes to what God wants to do. They don't understand scripture. They are, they are blind. They are ignorant. So why, but why are you making a man like God? No one makes a man like God. But you respect the godness on a man. And that is what you attract. The godness on a man is called anointing. If you recognize it, it will work for you. Didn't Elisha prophesy in, uh, in, in, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 5 that tomorrow morning by this time, food will be cheap at the gate. The man said, I don't believe in this. You cannot, what you are saying cannot happen. He said, well, you didn't receive what I'm saying. It will happen, you see, but you cannot enjoy it, you will die. So yesterday I said, if you see anointing, you can never see anointing anywhere without a vessel. Have you ever seen oil, usable oil? Without a con- the proper oil that can- is, is suspended in the air. So you go and put your head under it and then. <laughs> no. And if you leave it on the ground, you can't make use of it. Even crude oil must be extracted, processed, and put in barrels before it can be used. Every oil requires a container to be usable. And the anointing actually is oil. It must be on the anointed. And then when you encounter the anointed, it is not evident that the anointing will come on you. 
The only thing is if you touch the anointed, you have touched oil. Like I explained the other time. If I pour oil on my attire and you come and touch me, you have touched me, but it's, the marks of the oil will remain on your hands. It's like smart water. Police will get you. Spiritually, you have brought a judgment and a curse on yourself, and it will never wash out of your hands because you have touched an anointed person. You spoke against an anointed person. You did something against an anointed God said, please, when my anointed goes wrong, let me deal, because as soon as I anoint, I anoint somebody, it becomes very dangerous for, for other people's health and safety. When God anoints a person, the person becomes dangerous. He anoints a person to be ben- a benefit to humanity, but others who are ignorant and don't respect may touch this anointed and they will be responsible for the consequences. You, you touch an anointed, you will be responsible. But the same way, in the same token, if God wants to help you, he will send an anointed person your way. An anointed person. In other words, oh, if you are looking for an anointing, look for somebody with, on whom the anointing is. So you, if you want anointing, don't look for anointing. Look for the anointed. Look for the anointing. And Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, it says the anointing is what destroys the yoke. That burden on your head. It takes an anointing to break it off so that you can say I'm, I'm free. Jesus himself said in his words in John chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 4 verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to Heal the, uh, preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the broken heart. God, the anointing is upon me for the benefit of humanity. Wow. He has anointed me to do something to some people. In Acts chapter 10 verse 13, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Jesus was an embodiment of anointing. That's why he was able to heal the sick. That's why he was able to raise the dead. That's why he was able to cast out devils. That was anointing. Jesus himself, in his own words, in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 24, he says that if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, then you know that the kingdom of God is in your midst. It's a hand. If I, Luke, chapter 11, verse 24, or 23, from 21 to 23, for there, he says, if I, 20 rather, but if I cast out devils with the finger of God, you must know that the kingdom of God is on your, amongst you. The kingdom of God, I think the same thing is in Matthew 12, 24, if my memory serves me right. If I cast, so he is casting out, watch this. Jesus cast out devils, not by his own power, but by the finger of God. And the finger of God is the spirit of God. The spirit of God on him was the anointing. He said, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you for function to set captives free to destroy the works of the devil, it is called anointing. Anointing. Elijah asked Elisha, I'm about to be taken. What do you want? Elisha said in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, Elisha said that I will have a double portion of the Spirit on your life. It's the same, the anointing. The spirit, of, oh, I want double portion of it. And he says that you have had, asked for a hard thing. However, if you see me go, you shall have it. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter, I think 16 verse 13, Bible talks about how David was anointed. How year was poured on David in the middle of his, in the midst of his brothers. And Samuel took the horn of oil. Someone say oil. oil. Say oil. oil. Anointing is a function of oil. You can't be anointed without oil. In the Old Testament, no one steps into any of these key offices. The office of a priest, the office of a prophet, and the office of a king. You can't function there if you haven't been anointed. You must be anointed before you operate in that office. Because God respects offices. And when you get into the office, it's not because you are perfect, but it's because an anointing has been placed on you to function. So when you are honoring a man of God, it is not the person, but it is the hand of... Samuel took the horn of oil 
and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And what happened? Was the oil the spirit? No. But the oil was a symbol of the power. When he put it on him, the Holy Spirit came upon him from that day forward. That's how he was killing lions. He was killing bears. And Goliath became like a piece of meat. Because he was anointed. Now, if somebody is anointed, that means the anointing is not for him. The anointing is to help people. <laughs> for whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord you will never miss your portion. Amen. I said you will never miss your portion. Amen. As we close, remember this thing is about anointing and encounters. It's not about proximity. It's not about proximity or convenience. If you, the cost for anointing, it will cost you time. If you don't have time for God, he doesn't have time for you. Put that on your Twitter. And quote me and do it care of Bishop Oyedepo. <laughs> because I can't steal it. I wish it was my statement, but Papa made it, so I have to really, I don't know, it's plagiarism. <laughs> Quote me, Pastor David said, if you don't have time for God, he doesn't have time for you. Care of Bishop Oyedepo. Yeah, comment. Most people don't know the God they claim to be serving. Paul said in uh, Acts chapter 18, the God whom you serve without, it's Acts chapter 17, I'm sorry. The God whom you serve without knowing, him declare I to you. You are serving a God you don't know, but I came to declare him to you. There are a lot of people who are attempting to serve God, but they don't. Acts chapter verse 23, 17, 23. For as I passed through, your, uh, I passed through and considered the objects of your worship, I found an altar with an inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the God, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. People are worshiping a God they don't know. Why? Because they are worshiping based on feelings. But the spirit of God is called the spirit of truth. Yeah. He said, a time is coming when the true worshippers, John chapter 4, verse 24, will worship in, in spirit and in feeling. No, and in truth. You know what you are about. So, anointing will cost you time. Sometimes we are all seated here. Oh, yeah. We are not have time. Huh? You know, hospital can take a lot of time. Yeah. I guarantee you, many sicknesses take more time than church. But by God's grace, because I've spent so much time in church, sickness hasn't had the privilege of taking time in my time. Am I supposing that if you don't go to church, you'll be sick? No, no, no. That, that's, that's, far from the, that's far from what I'm saying. I'm saying that something will take your time. Give it to God. And let God take care of other things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yesterday... The cost of the anointing is it will cost you time, the cost of humility, the cost of openness. Some people are coming to a pastor to pray for you, but you're always lying. You're lying. A certain lady, she used to work in the bank and she was doing fraud. Yeah. She was doing fraud. She used to be work, a worker, bank work, and she was a member in the church. And one day police went to arrest her. She called me, Pastor, pray for me. I said, what happened? He said, I don't even know what they are talking about. <laughs> you want the anointing to work for you, but you are lying to the anointing. <laughs> I mean, I pray in the integrity of my heart genuinely, but the prayer didn't work. I didn't understand, but I left it. <laughs> <laughs> it was later I found out that uh, she was actually culp culpable, but she never told me the truth. Guys, we have to close. This thing is getting too exciting. <laughs> so, the anointing, the cost of the anointing is time. The cost of the anointing is humility. The cost of the anointing is openness. If you want to tap into anointing from a career, these things are necessary. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you receive something? We thank God for using his servant, Reverend Dr. David Entry, to share this awesome word. 
If this message has blessed you in any way, please spread the word by sharing it and send us an email to amen at caris.org. Remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter for regular updates on what God is doing here at Caris Ministries. Stay blessed.